Good afternoon. I'm Mike Kalstrom, and I'm co-chairman of the City Club Special Programs Committee. Welcome to the first of three programs on water, our region's biggest asset. Water was at the center of our region's development even before Europeans settled here. It has provided abundant sustenance for agriculture and has offered a transportation corridor for the raw materials that fed the region's steel and manufacturing growth. It has supported recreational fishing and boating opportunities, and its relative abundance has made the potable supply a relatively unlimited asset for our population. While water has demonstrable historical significance, it also continues to provide sustaining support for our regional economy and remains at the center of commercial, agricultural, and recreational concerns. The moderator for today's program is broadcast news veteran Rick Jackson, the host of IdeaStream's Emmy Award-winning public affairs program, Ideas, and a frequent host and contributor to programs on 90.3 WCPN. Long familiar to Clevelanders for his work as a news anchor and reporter for Cleveland television stations WOIO, WAB, and WKYC, and as the morning voice of Idea Streams WCPN, Rick has spent 31 years in local and network television broadcasting and in radio news. Rick left Northeast, Northeast Ohio in the 80s, but returned to Cleveland in 1999, following more than a decade in Charlotte, North Carolina, and New York City. In the Big Apple, he anchored CBS News Up to the Minute, a four-hour live overnight international news program seen in 48 states and more than 50 countries. He's interviewed Presidents Carter, Reagan, Bush, and Bush, and covered big events like the crash of TWA Flight 800 in New York and national political conventions in New Orleans and Chicago. During 2002, Mr. Jackson hosted the syndicated public affairs series Village America, seen nationally on many PBS stations. In 2001, Rick was inducted into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He's also received multiple Emmy Award nominations and an Emmy Award in 2006 for his work hosting Ideas. He recently added a 2008 Society of Professional Journalists Award and has multiple Associated Press Reporting Awards. For the fifth year, he is the host of WVIZ's News Depth a news program designed for young people and, and seen on all of Ohio's public television stations and in schools across the state. While he hails from Pittsburgh, he's fortunately for us chosen Cleveland. Rick? Thank you, Mike. I want to thank the City Club for putting this together. I really enjoy coming out and doing the informational debates, the informational panels, the political debates, everything that goes on here. It's a lot of fun for me. I'm always pleased also to be able to spend more time with good folks like you. We are gathered to talk about this stuff, the bacteria-laden water that was referenced earlier. <clears throat> we drink it, we make our livelihoods with it, we clean it, we bottle it, we play in it. But do we value it? Do we treasure it? Do we defend it? Four blocks from here sits the 10th largest lake on our planet, 9,900 square miles, home to fisheries, supporter of agriculture, recreational paradise for about half the year, and a snowmaker for the other half, including tomorrow, unfortunately. But most of us really give the lake and our rivers and really all of our water the attention it deserves. I do. I love big water. He mentioned I grew up right by the Allegheny, about a half a mile. I've lived alongside the Allegheny, the Ohio many times, the Mississippi, the East, the Hudson, and now for 13 years, Lake Erie. But I also have friends in Phoenix. They have rock gardens. <laughs> they are so jealous of us because only the rich have lawns there. In Ohio, each person, each one of you, uses about 75 gallons of water a day for domestic uses. So when the water that we use is added to industry and agriculture and everything else, it's about 1,100 gallons a person a day. So yeah, this stuff is very important to us. And we're spoiled because we have it. Those Phoenicians, they are very spoiled because they're mad at us. It's also more expensive there and scarce. We can change that understanding though. We don't know enough about our water. So here to talk to us today about our water and about what we make from our water are two very renowned gentlemen who are far more knowledgeable about H2O than I. Let's meet them. Pat Conway writes that he has a love affair with beer. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, it's, it's mostly water. His love affair began while he was bartending to get through grad school at the University of Chicago. It continued when he left for Europe. He came home. He was convinced that Americans were gravitating toward the European style beers that he admired. So he came back to his hometown, city he loves, to pursue his dream of opening the first craft brewery in Ohio. 
He co-owns it with his brother. You know it is Great Lakes Brewing Company over on Market Avenue. And the product is sitting there. Product placement, I guess. That was, <clears throat> that was a prop for the radio. Oh, okay. It works, it works in Hollywood. It works here. Product placement. The label speaks, right? So go ahead and welcome him. <laughs> This is John H. Grabowski. He is the Krieger Mueller Historian at the Western Reserve Historical Society and the Krieger Mueller Associate Professor of Applied History at Case Western Reserve University. He serves as editor of the Encyclopedia of Cleveland History, the Dictionary of Cleveland Biography, and a plethora of other books, some co-authored with his wife Diane. He's also taught at Cleveland State University, Kent State University, Cuyahoga Community College, and was a senior Fulbright lecturer at Bill Kent University in Ankara, Turkey for several years. He is a member of Phi Beta Kappa. His research interests center on American immigration, public history, and the disjuncture between academic and popular history. Please welcome John Grabowski. <laughs> so why these two men to discuss water? Why do we ask them how water sustains us? Let's turn it over to John now, get a little historical perspective on the importance of water economically, agriculturally, commercially, and recreationally in and around Greater Cleveland. Thank you, Rick. I, I have to start off by saying this is one of the uh, few times I've sat at a table with Pat Conway and I've not had a beer in my hand, rather a glass of water. <laughs> but uh, what I... <laughs> That's a true story. He's, he's led me astray for many years, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Actually, you know, if we look at where we live, at Cleveland, this community, Northeastern Ohio, however you want to term it, it, it would not be here if it weren't situated where it is, on, on a river and a lake. And, and that was something that was critical to the founders, the establishers of this community. Uh, I want to talk about how they viewed water, how we view water, and how that view has both stayed the same and changed slightly over the intervening two centuries. And actually, I'm bracketing my talk between two dates. Now, you don't have to remember the dates. There are no blue books. There's no test after this. Uh, but the first date is July 22nd, 1796, which is Cleveland's birthday. It's the, uh, the day that Moses Cleveland alighted from a boat in the Cuyahoga River and struggled up to what is now Public Square. Uh, the other date is June 22nd, 1969. Uh, most of you will know, or some of you will know, that that's the fire, quote, the fire on the Cuyahoga River. Well, it wasn't the fire. There were about eight fires on the river, but it's the one that got the notice. And I think that fire <coughs> marks a change in the way we viewed water. If we look at Moses Cleveland, who comes from New England, uh, he has an attitude toward water that is shaped by early colonial America. Water is not only important for agriculture and for drinking it. And, and by the way, colonial Americans drank a lot of other stuff that was distilled. Uh, water was secondary maybe because it had bacteria. But colonial America depended on water for transportation. Uh, you were profitable in the colonies if you lived in an area that had river transportation that could take your goods down to another water-based transport route. Rivers into the back country were critical. That's where tobacco came from in Virginia. That's where products came out of uh, New England. And rivers were also important when they went over a geologic feature and they had a fall line. So all the early factories and production occurred on the fall line. So when Moses Cleveland, as a member of the Connecticut Land Company, was, was looking at the maps of what we would call the Western Reserve and looking for a place to land and settle, it was obvious to him that what we now know as the mouth of the Cuyahoga on Lake Erie would be an important point. Now, he'd had some people who talked about this before. Uh, ben Franklin, after reviewing maps that were done by Evans and Mitchell in the mid-18th century, Franklin noted that the point where this river that we call Cuyahoga met the lake was a place of potential strategic importance. And strategic importance in northeastern Ohio. The last thing I remember were the Nike missile sites on the lakefront. But actually, if you're looking at the contention between empires, the French and the British Empire, in the middle of the 18th century, this, this was critical. 